What's up, guys? Teddy Cornwell here. Welcome to the Underdog Talk. Something about the Underdog. Today we have two very special guests, as you guys can see. But before we get into this interview, I have to give them a proper Underdog Talk introduction. Oh. I know. Today's guests are the minds behind three of the most famous fitness documentaries of all time. And these three films happen to be in the iTunes Top 100 best-selling documentaries of all time. Two of the minds behind the breakout brand of the year, Podium Supplements, the stars of the mega-hit YouTube channel, Buttery Bros, I give you, hailing from the University of Utah, Mr. Hepper Cannon, and from the University of Dixie State, Mr. Marston Sawyer. What wow. is up, guys? Dude, what an introduction. Thanks for the intro, man. That was I, <laughs> I know, and and Marson, I got to ask you real quick. What did you think of change of your uh, school changing the mascot? In, like, sure, they they just have an identity <laughs> crisis going on down there. They like, were the Red Storm when I was there, and then they left. Well, no, they were the Rebels, and then they were the Red Storm, and then I, I left, and then now there's the Trailblazers. I I don't know, you know. You can't keep up with it, and yeah. I mean, before we get into this interview, I have to ask both of you: Was Half Thor Bjornsson really that tall or big? Or is this just in the movies? Yeah, he's really that big. He's uh, he's big. He's a massive that guy, man. Yeah, that kid. That guy eats chickens live. You know, he's huge. Yeah, I, I figured. I just had to wonder if he was really that big. I mean, I've seen some pictures, and the dude. Yeah, he, he he's the real deal. So. Yeah, he's literally yeah. double Heber. Yeah, he's two of you. Two so of me. Probably like triple, quadruple of me. So that's <laughs> that's something. So I want to start from the beginning of a, of it all. You guys split from Cross in, CrossFit Inc., where you're both responsible for creating a total of three of iTunes' top best-selling documentaries of all time. Now, I watched all four total, and, I mean, wow, they were impressive. Um, so you both went to college for media-slash-film studies. Have you always been into cinema and film? Yeah, it was just kind of something I was uh, always interested growing up because cameras were, like, this contraption device that I kind of was interested in. They you know, watching back just the stuff that I would film around me, like in middle school and high school was, was fun. And I didn't actually get into editing as much until I got to like college and got to manipulate clips a lot more and be able to tell a story a lot more the way that I wanted to. And so as time went on, you know, I, I ended up doing a bunch of fitness films and, you know, now we're doing a weekly YouTube show and it's been a like, I feel like I'm able to express myself the best with that medium. Cause like the written word isn't really my thing, you know? So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta tell, I gotta express myself somehow. And it's usually through visual storytelling. Ever, what about you? Uh, for me, I've always played with cameras. I've, I've, uh, I grew up making videos. Like I grew up making skate videos. I was uh, five when I had my first experience in front of a camera with uh, my brother making a skit, a sketch comedy about the remaking the, the famous movie back to the future. And so he went back to the future and I was the younger version of himself um, and uh, have always had an affinity for filmmaking and, and storytelling. And throughout all the high school, I was making short films and sketches and, and my senior year, it, it dawned on me that I could do this as a living. And, and I put all my eggs into that basket. I uh, bought a Mac uh, computer, Mac tower, and uh, Final Cut Pro 2 and figured out how to edit. Um, and that was the first time using like actual software as opposed to like I was editing on VCR to VCR when I first started, like really old school stuff. And so um, it's been really fun to be able to turn two of my passions into now my full-time job, which was uh, exercising and fitness and filmmaking. And so um, I, I kind of landed a, a nice little couple of, of work there between those two and, and kind of get to do the dream job now. I mean, it sounds like you were a star at a young age, taking those videos with your brother <laughs> at a young age. I mean, an actor at a young age. Um, so when did both of you learn about CrossFit, CrossFit and when did you guys fall in love with CrossFit? Uh, so the year was probably 2009. I had just torn my ACL and I was working a summer job trying to like rehab and I uh, ended up bumping into Tommy Hackenbrook, who had just opened his first gym in Salt Lake City. And he was kind of like ahead of the times, I guess, and in, in, in as far as like competing in the sport. And I kind of got to 
experience what CrossFit was through him. And he taught me how to kind of rehab my knee and get back into shape for the last college football season. And then stayed in touch with him and then eventually met Heber at a local competition and then got hired to be a, a producer for CrossFit and moved across state lines to California and ended up working there for like 10 years. And yeah, I guess I fell in love with it somewhere amongst all that. Um, <laughs> I think that, it, yeah, like the workouts were obviously really brutal and really taxing and tough, but uh, I was constantly learning new skills and getting better and feeling more fit and not only physically, but mentally. And uh, yeah, now it's kind of just, it's part of my life and everyday training and I'm happy to have, you know, learned all those skills a little bit younger than I am now. Yeah, for me, it was 2008. Um, a couple months earlier, the movie 300 had come out and uh, I had watched the behind the scenes on how these athletes, the, the athletes, the actors got so jacked. And I was like, uh, wow, this looks like a really fun way to train. Um, at that point in my life, I was uh, I would go swim. I would box. I would lift weights. Um, I had done zero squatting and zero Olympic lifting. I had always skipped leg day. Um, and so, uh, when I saw how they trained for that movie, I was like, Oh, that looks like Rocky. Like that looks really fun. That looks like a fun way to, to, to get after it. And, um, I couldn't find a gym that did what they did. I didn't really research it that much. I just thought this looks really fun. Um, and then a little later, a friend of mine had lost a lot of weight and we asked him how he did it. And he, he pulled up this browser of a dinky looking gym just down the street. And, uh, it was called CrossFit 801. And I said, that looks like the 300 thing. I want to go do that. And he took me the next day. Uh, he's older than me and overweight and he beat me in the workout and I was forever pissed and vowed that it would never happen again and immediately fell in love with the sport. And, and, uh, from that point forward, I was all in, I would, I would, I couldn't afford a gym membership. So I would uh, go to the university of Utah gym and, and look at the workouts of the day on people's blogs between CrossFit.com, CrossFit 801, other CrossFits that were popular at the time and teach myself how to push press, how to push jerk. What's the difference between a, between those two movements, how to do a strict pull up or a kipping pull up and, and kind of figured out how to do this. And eventually I found a way into paying for a CrossFit gym membership and uh, eventually working for the company. So uh, that that right there is the beginning of my journey to where I am now. So, Heather, is it safe to say you're a fan of Jared Butler then? Guy Gerard who's... Butler's, yeah, Gerard's a great, uh, great actor. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I don't know that he's done a whole lot of great movies since then. <laughs> That's right. definitely the peak of his career so far. Jason Mavericks, man. Yeah. yeah, Jason Mavericks is pretty good. He was definitely jacked in 300. So, I mean, that's a good, that's a good example to set for. Yeah. Um, now, is there anything different from creating a fitness documentary compared to another category of the documentary? Well, I think there's there's lots of differences between the type of documentaries we've made versus other documentaries. First of all, like we, uh, I I never set out to be a documentary filmmaker. I wanted to be a filmmaker. I wanted to make movies like 300 or big action movies. Like they just dropped the trailer for the new Mission Impossible and I'm fired up about that. And if I could have a dream job, it would be direct Mission Impossible 9, I guess would have to be the next one. Um, but like uh, when we made these movies, we've now, so I think some of the data you've got is a, a little behind. We've now made six movies, um, all featuring CrossFit and fitness. And we try to approach those as though they're action movies with, with fast cuts, uh, high, fast pace, um, and with, uh, ebbs and flows of, of, uh, energy, meaning that like uh, when you're on the competition floor, it's fast paced, it's high energy and you draw out really big, important moments. Like when, when an athlete lands a really heavy clean or something. Um, but then you, you slow the pace down when you're behind the scenes and you're getting to know people. Um, and, and that to me has the pace of what an action movie is, is, you know, when there's action, it's big, it's fast, it's, it's beautiful. And you're, you're the best action movies are showcasing the action in a, in a full frame. So you have a complete understanding of what they're doing. Um, and we try to do that with our movies where uh, other documentaries that I don't know how they do them because I've never made them. Um, but I, historically they've gotten a lot better recently, but definitely when we first started in like 2013, I could name like two documentaries that I had seen because I'm not, uh, that's not the type of entertainment that I was uh, consuming at that time. Wow. I mean, my data was wrong. Six. Wow. 
I love that. And I definitely have watched four of them then. And they were, they <laughs> the good were, news is, is you get two more to watch. Well, I have all day to day to watch those. So <laughs> the four I watched were very impressive. They were very cinematic. And I definitely see what you're talking about in terms of that action. So I definitely love that. So I want to jump forward to January 2019. This channel called The Buttery Bros comes out of nowhere. And your first video, you drop a banger with the GOAT and former fittest man on the earth, Matthew Frazier. So first, I got to ask, why the Buttery Bros? And second, why did you guys create the channel? So Buttery was something we would say when we worked together at CrossFit all the time. If we nailed like a nice composed cinematic shot, it'd be like, you got to see this shot, super buttery, like smooth, you know? And so when we started our YouTube channel, we wanted it to be something with Buttery and, you know, Buttery Bros. That's that's yeah. what we came up with. Uh, and we happen to be like working for like another sponsor or not a sponsor, but just for a brand doing a commercial in Tennessee with Fraser. And it would just kind of like was a combination of good timing and, and right place, right time. Uh, we had just been to Dubai and watched those guys do an, a workout called acid bath, which if you haven't done it, it's appropriately named. It, it has a, ski ergs rowers and bike erg in it and so we happened to get done shooting that commercial that day and we we're kind of trying to figure out what to do for a workout and the idea was like maybe we should do this acid bath thing just because everybody was so destroyed so heber went set the time to beat had chris hinshaw just cheering him on team hebes you know giving him pairs of shoes and stuff and then uh, it was my turn to go and we handed the camera over to sammy because Hebrew was a little too dosed up to be able to hold the camera at this point. And so Sammy, shout out to her. She's a big reason why we got the first episode shot. Um, but then, you know, as the record states, I went on to beat Heber um, one game win streak. And then looking back at the footage later on, uh, the, like a couple of days later, I was like, hey, this is actually kind of entertaining and fun. Maybe we should like put this together and throw it up on YouTube because we were kind of at this point where we were like, trying to figure out really what our future was going to be like. And we happened to be going to Wadapalooza to do like more of our traditional media type of documentary storytelling type stuff. So we threw that up on YouTube and right away, like we're at the, this event in Miami and people were recognizing us as the buttery bros. And that was kind of the beginning of, you know, we're 150 episodes in now. And uh, what a, what a, great thing that was kind of created out of uh you know just a couple of guys getting together in a, in a garage gym and seeing yeah. what happened Sheesh. and i mean speaking of the future you're three years in with 150 episodes so what do you see next for the buttery bros and what is the goal you still want to accomplish with the buttery bros youtube uh, i think there's a lot of goals um that we have right now, we're setting a goal of just really growing our community to 250,000 subscribers. So that's that's some a metric we've never really pushed before. Like up until like four months ago, we were never saying subscribe to our channel. Like if we did, it was very rare. It was just something that we didn't do a good job of focusing on um, because our, our community is so big uh, on YouTube and on Instagram and um, maintaining that. So growing the channel and growing to, uh, not abandoning CrossFit, but also becoming much more um, not like our audience. And I, I think our interests are, are bigger than just that. And I think uh, we can, we can expand into general fitness and tourism and entertainment. Um, I think is a, a fun way to expand our niche and, and expand to outside of our niche. Um, and, and really just bigger, funner activities and, and finding things that push us outside of our comfort zone and, and give us more life resume experience, experiences. Heck yeah. And I mean, I think another thing that will get your name out is podium supplements. So I definitely want to talk about that. I mean, you, Matt Frazier, Paul Haverland, Jeremy Osborne, create this brand. Now, how did you get the idea to create a supplement brand? Uh, well... I guess it kind of just came from like, we were, we were trying to figure out who to work with in the space as far as like from a supplement standpoint. And then we were kind of, you know, taking different options there. And then out of nowhere, somebody slid into the buttery bros DMS named Jeremy. 
he said that he had, you know, had this idea of starting a supplement brand in the CrossFit space. And he thought that me and Hebrew were a good avenue to approach and, and I guess, start the brand with us. And because we're involved in the community, we were traveling, we're out there making content. So it seemed like a really good fit. Uh, and so he introduced us to another guy named Paul. Paul has like a background of creating other very well-known brands. Yeah, if, you, this- if you look over your shoulder, you've got Ghost back there. Yes, that I was do. that was a that was a brand that Paul had helped start. Oh wow! Sorry, wow. I didn't mean to interrupt, Mars. I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, so he he came from uh, Cellucor and Extend, and then went and went on to create Ghost Life, and then he approached us, and he's like, "Hey, we want to do the same thing, but in the." the CrossFit fitness space. And so we were like, you definitely have our attention and our curiosity. So go on. And, and, you know, the more we got to know him and know what he kind of came from, we were like, this seems like a no brainer. So just so happened to be right around when Matt was retiring. So we went over to our buddy, Matt and was like, Hey, I know you got a ton of time on your hands, right? Like, do you want to, you want to help us start this, uh, this brand? And he was, he was game too. So we were kind of off to the races and we've since brought on uh, Justin Medeiros and yeah. he's, you know, just the golden retriever. Uh, and d- flavor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you've tried that. It's really good. Right. And then we just, uh, uh, Craig Ritchie in the UK, he's been huge for that market. And then we've brought on a, a couple other ones like street parking and then just recently signed Martins Lisi's uh, world's strongest man. So he's uh, it's, it's cool to expand outside of CrossFit and just kind of like, tip our hat to other really impressive athletes in other spaces. Wow. I mean, I work at GNC and I've been pushing these products lately because my God, that, all right. You're our inside man. Buttery, that maple buttery pancake flavor. Right. I mean, Gross. I've had many, I've had many proteins in my life, probably over <laughs> 300. And that maybe maple, maple butter pancake was probably gone in maybe a week and a half. I mean, yeah. it was so darn good. I, I love. Can, I can see it in your biceps. Uh, <laughs> I'm not that big. I, not not like you, Herbert. But um, I'm sorry, not like you. But um, so where do you see podium supplements down the line? What's the next step for them? I think for us, uh, for podium, it's it's just creating more products, right? So like we're we're a startup brand, and and we've got a head start on other brands because like we because of the experience of Paul in reality. And, and uh, his knowledge of, of how to develop and, and create products that are awesome. Um, right now, we've got three that are all fantastic. We've got a, we call it Fuse, which is our pre-workout that is kind of specifically designed by Matt Fraser, who has won the CrossFit Games five times and knows a thing or two about how to, to find a workout, a, a pre-workout that's specific for CrossFitters or uh high intensity interval training types, you know, situations, it's very different than like a, a pre-workout for a bodybuilding pump. So, uh, if you're doing CrossFit or, or high functioning, high, uh, functional fitness type training, that this is a great pre-workout for it. Then the other product that I love is our hydro and salt, which is BCAAs, but we've added Himalayan salt to it. Um, which is what you sweat out when you do long workouts or you're biking or you're like, it's the product that's missing from Gatorade. Like you don't, you you may, you definitely might need those sugars that Gatorade provides you, but they don't have the electrolytes that you need to replenish stores that you're losing through your sweat. Um, And so if you're drinking that and cramping, that's why, but our product has, has, is what I saw a lot of top athletes looking for. And we created it all in one brand, all in one supplement, and it tastes phenomenal. And then, as you mentioned earlier, the protein. So beyond that, I'm, I'm excited to expand into other avenues of like, what other products can we create? Um, what other things can we, we generate that is beneficial for, uh, lifestyle and for, for athletes looking to better themselves and make their lives a little bit more convenient and easier, um, and supplement their lives with something that's, that, uh, is tasty. And so, that's where we're looking to take podium. I can't go into too many specifics because everything changes every other week. And, and with how the world is operating right now, it's, it's, you know, we have one direction one week and then the next week there's massive global changes and we have to shift. So, uh, that's been a really fun project to be working on. And we're, we're stoked about the future of podium. It's been a fun brand to be a part of. It's definitely rising and growing. Now, my final question to you gentlemen, what is your favorite podium product? probably the hydro and salt just because like I, I take that 
prior to going into the sauna because I sweat a ton in there. I, t I take it before and during I'm working out and stuff. So I feel like, you know, a lot of uh, other type of products don't add in salt because they're probably more focused on aesthetics and we're focused on performance. And so I feel like we kind of broke the mold as far as those type of products when we created Hydro and salt. And I think that's our best. I, I think our proteins taste the best too. Like we did a pretty vigorous protein tasting uh, back when we were designing everything. And so we really wanted it to be one, like it wanted to mix well and wanted it to be able to, you know, to taste well. So other than that, I feel like hydro and salt fuse is great. I mean, they're all great. You know, like we, we spend a lot of time on formulating these things. What about you? He, yeah, I would have to agree. My favorite product, the one that I use the most is definitely the hydro and salt. I, I take, at least two or three scoops of that a day. And, and um, yeah, there's great ways to mix it, to make it unique and just getting more flavors than that is another thing we want to do. And we have some more flavors that we're announcing here in the next couple of weeks that I'm excited about. Um, but yeah, I take, I drink that hydro and salt. Like it's run out of style. Like I, I consume that regularly. Yes. And I've been mixing the hydro and salt with the fuse. So I'm getting like a hydrated energized boost here. Yeah. A nice little boosty. The boosties. Wow. And and you mix flavors too. It's not like yeah, a yeah. sour melon. Because as yeah. of right now, we have a, a peach mango and a sour watermelon. So I like to go sour watermelon, peach I mango. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That sounds I'm gonna tell my customers do a half and half, get both yeah. the products. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, cool. a little fruit fusion, you know. Oh. We're we're actually considering dressing up as a, some GNC employees and slinging some yeah. <laughs> some podium out of a shop. Oh, that would be that would be a game changer. See what people really think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't think you have anything to worry about because it is an amazing brand. Yeah. The quality's there. The taste is there. So definitely supporting it. Definitely going to keep on using it because, I mean, Heber, like you said, my muscles are definitely getting bigger because of the podium. Yeah. So um, now, gentlemen, I know you are both extremely busy men, but are you guys down for some rapid fire questions before I get you out of here? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. hit me with it. All right. Butter SUV or butter pickup truck? SUV. Yeah, I go with the truck. It's got the functionality of the back bed, you know. Yes, I love, I love, I love. I got, I got still and go seating, so you know, in case, in case I have a soccer team, I'm. I'm yeah, ready to go. for what kids, Mars? Oh, you got your rigs dog in the back seat. Who are you driving around with? I've stowed them. Just, just back there wasting fossil fuels, driving around a soccer family that doesn't exist. Hey man, I, I pull it too, so you know, I. I I reduce my carbon imprint. Yeah. yeah that's, all right. That's fair. Live, <laughs> live in your parents' basement for a year or live on a boat for a whole year. Boat. I've done, I've done the, I've done the parents' basement. Right, that's why I was I'm happy to, yeah. I'll take the boat. Any day. Uh, <laughs> depends on the size of the boat. We'll, we'll say that. We'll go medium. Yeah. I don't know what that means, but as long as everyone has a room, yeah, maybe the boat sounds more fun. All right. Favorite podium protein. Uh, Pe I go with Pe peanut butter. Yeah, yeah, maple butter pancake. I like the maple butter is that's just the flavor. But the cookies and cream just came out and it is amazing. It is yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah, from the mullet man himself. I love it. Box Rocky in his prime or talk like him for the rest of your life? Oh, I box him. I'd take on Sylvester Stallone. No problem. Was he that good of a boxer? I mean, like, yeah, they I made know. him look good in the movie, but I don't mean like. Uh... <laughs> I'll give yeah. you a bunch of training. I'm not just going to throw you in the ring. And, and if it does go bad, like you might end up talking like him the rest of your life anyways, you know? True. That is that is true. I mean, you might be walking around like him. So, but you can say you boxed Rocky in your prime. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's, that's a resume booth right there. This is a big one. Final question. There is only one right answer. Pull-ups or chin-ups? Oh. Uh, Are you talking uh, like... Like this is a pull up and this is a chin up. Yes, I, I like chin ups. Yeah, I would say. I, I, I mean, like, like, like if here, I'm doing just yeah. a strict pull up, I I prefer the bicep pump that I get from a from a chin up as opposed to the yeah lat lat strength that I get from a pull up. Okay, okay, that's a fair that's a fair answer. I was always going to say pull ups just because. I, not that I can do either of, the, either of them, but all right. Oh I, come I on, man! You've been taking them products though. That yeah, you can be lighting the fuse, bro. The fuse does get me that pump and the energy to do more of both. So, all right. I, 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 
I would say the pull up is more functional for things outside of the gym. Like if you're climbing over a fence or you're climbing up a big wall, like you're more likely to have to use a pull up grip to get up that. So for training for life. Yeah. If you're running from the police and climbing yeah. fences, you know, that's yeah, that's the life you have to live. I was saying like running from zombies and that's apocalyptic it. shit, you know? Yeah. That's a lot more likely than, than the, cops. the law. Yeah. <laughs> I never had an experience running from the lot. Yeah, I have. Uh, I haven't either. Um, gentlemen, it's been an honor and privilege. Is there anything you guys want to plug? Um, podium, our, get podium. Get our, our podium company. Yeah, we got Krieger backpacks. If you haven't checked those out yet, they're the best gym bags on the market. I'm going to go ahead and say it. And then uh, our weekly YouTube show. We've been publishing every Monday. So if you go over to YouTube and search Buttery Bros, you can see it there. We also have a Patreon page where we do behind the scenes and like some uh, color commentary on our previous episodes. We're going to be dropping those. And then we're working on a, a, a longer form documentary that is going to be coming out sometime just after semis. So I can finally say it correctly. It will be seven, not four or six. It will be seven coming down the road, right? Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put this one into that same category because it's more of just like a mini doc, but uh, yeah, six and a half. All right. Six, yeah. We'll go six and a half. We'll call it like that. Yeah. Uh, Instagram, Buttery Bros, Marston Sawyers, and Heber Cannon on Instagram. Make sure to follow them. Link to those will be in the bio. Podium Supplements is the truth. Um, as you guys can see, I have some big guests coming on. Make sure to check out these gentlemen's content because it is fire. Um, until next time, guys, Underdog out. Thanks, Teddy. <laughs>